So, this week's iBond video is about how to buy an iBond for your business via Treasury Direct and the most frequently asked questions business owners have about doing this. Because let's face it, where else can you get 7.12% on an annualized basis on something as safe as a 30 year US government savings bond during these uncertain times? Hi guys, it's Jennifer here with Diamond Essay. And yes, for those of you following our iBond and inflation series, I've bought even more iBonds since the last videos. This time, I maxed out our annual iBon limit of $10,000 for Diamond Nesting, and that's in addition to all the iBonds we've purchased for our personal portfolio. You can buy iBonds regardless of whether you're an LLC, PLLC, S Corp, partnership, or sole proprietor. For example, even if you're a freelancer or contractor, say for Amazon, Grubhub, Uber, or Fiverr. This means you could buy $10,000 this year for your LLC and any other business entities you might own. In addition to your personal annual IBON limit of $10,000, plus up to $5,000 with your personal tax refund. By the end of this video, you'll know what you should do before you buy IBONs for your business, how to buy IBONs for your business, as well as the most common questions business owners have about buying iBonds for their business. Now, if you're interested more in buying iBonds as an individual or for your children, or even how to buy more than your annual iBond purchase limit of $10,000 entirely legally, then check out all of our other iBond tutorials on the channel. I've linked them all below. First, register your business. You can either do this via your state, as is the case typically with an LLC, S Corp, DBA, or equivalent. Some cities and counties also require a business license. And even if you're a sole proprietor, freelancer, or contractor, as I mentioned earlier, who typically reports your business income via Schedule C when you file your personal taxes, you should still try to get some form of DBA or local business license before you buy iBonds for your business. The reason for this, because such a registration and or license proves that your business exists, that it's an actual business and therefore a separate entity from you, an individual, even if you own all or part of that business. The business is the business and you are you. That's a fundamental business tenant. Now, if you don't actually have a business or a side gig, I wouldn't go out and start setting up a DBA or multiple DBAs just to buy iBonds. In New York, it costs between $50 and $125 to set up a DBA, and even more if you're registering as an LLC or corporation. Plus, there's all the additional paperwork, taxes, and maintenance you need to deal with. Not worth the effort and time in my mind even for iBonds. And I don't say this lightly because we love our iBonds right now. Second, set up a separate business bank account. Just as a business is a separate entity from you, your business finances and investments should be separate from your personal finances and investments. And when you buy an iBond for your business, make sure that the money comes from your business bank account, not your personal one. Set boundaries, don't make things messy, and mix business and personal together. This will be a lifesaver if you ever get questions from Treasury Direct or the IRS. Also, remember that any I-bonds your business buys cannot be redeemed in the first 12 months. The government simply won't give you your money back. So make sure you're buying I-bonds for your business with excess cash that your business will not need for the next year. And if your business redeems its I-bonds in the first five years, it will lose the last three months of interest just like any private investor. Once you have these two things in place, it's time to set up your business account at Treasury Direct and buy the first I-bond for your business. And yes, you can only buy I-bonds via Treasury Direct, not via your traditional bank or broker like a Fidelity, Vanguard, or the like. 
But don't worry, the process only takes about five to 10 minutes. Worth it in my mind for 7.12% annualized yield on something as safe as a US government savings bond in the current market. A business like an individual can buy up to $10,000 of I-bonds per year via Treasury Direct. If you own several different businesses, you can buy $10,000 per business so long as each business has that amount of cash sitting in its bank account. You would, however, have to open up a separate business account at Treasury Direct for each of your businesses. Treasury Direct refers to business accounts as entity accounts. So what you'll need to do first is go to the US Treasury website and open an account, assuming you don't have one already. Then click on Treasury Direct under Individual Personal. What's going to pop up next is this page showing you the three-step process for setting up an account. In step one, you have to choose the type of account you're opening. Step two will require you to input your personal, business, and banking information. And step three is around setting up your password, password reminder, and security questions. Scroll down and click on Apply Now. So what you're going to do now is select the type of entity account you're going to open. Depending on how your business is set up, choose either corporation, partnership, LLC, PLLC, or sole proprietorship. Then click Submit. On the next screen, you'll see that I selected LLC because that's how Diamond Nesic is set up. Now enter your business name and give your account a name as well. Scroll down a bit now here and fill in your business's EIN or employer identification number if your business has an EIN. You'll also have to fill in your business's IRS name control in this case. You can typically find your business's IRS name control on the same document that you first received from the IRS informing you that you were assigned an EIN and what that EIN is. If your business does not have an EIN, for example, if you're a sole proprietor, then enter your social security number instead. You'll also need to type in the first four characters of whatever last name is associated with your social security number. Next, fill in your business address. Below that, you'll have to enter some personal information for whoever is managing this business treasury direct account, including their contact address, phone number, email address, and mailing address. Everything that is marked with a red asterisk is required. Now, complete the bank account information for your business. This bank account should be the one that your business is using to fund its iBond purchase with. Now, read through this section, check this box to certify that you agree with everything that's stated there, and click Submit. This will take you to the next screen, the Entity Account Application Review, where you should double check that all the information you've entered for your business is correct, including the account manager contact information and your business bank information. Scroll down, read through this section and submit if you agree with everything and there's nothing to correct or go back and edit if there are any mistakes. Once you click submit, this will be the screen you see next. Choose an image and an image caption. After this, choose your password, password reminder, and three security questions, and click Submit. And there you have it. Here's the confirmation page that you've opened your business account with Treasury Direct. At this point, check your email. You'll get something similar to this with your account number on it. So now that your business has an account with Treasury Direct, it's time to buy your first I-bonds for your business. Go back to the treasurydirect.gov homepage and click on login, which will take you to another login page. Click on login again. On the next screen, enter your account number. Because this is your first time logging into your account, you'll get this one-time passcode page. You'll find the one-time password at the same email address where you received your login account number. Enter the one-time password here and check this box so you don't have to do this again next time. Then click Submit. Here's the screen you'll see afterwards. Check your image and image caption to make sure everything is correct and then input your password via this virtual keyboard. 
Now scroll down below the virtual keyboard and click submit. And here you are ready to buy your first iBond for your business. Click on buy direct. On the next page, select iBonds. That's series I here. And scroll down and submit. Now, all you need to do is figure out how much you want to buy. The minimum is $25 and the maximum is $10,000. Be certain to double check that your business bank account is correct. This is the account that your business will be paying for its I bonds from. Scroll down and you'll see that you can buy these I bonds as a single purchase on a specific date as regularly scheduled purchases, for example, weekly, bi-weekly or monthly or on specific dates, like a few days after when your clients typically pay you. Now click submit. I went with a single purchase and here's the purchase review page that popped up afterwards. Check that all the information is correct. And if you see any errors, click on the edit button to go back and make corrections. Otherwise, if everything is good to go, hit submit. And abracadabra, you've just made your first IBON purchase for your business at a 7.12% annualized yield at current rates. If you have multiple businesses that you also want to buy I-bonds for, just go back to the beginning of this tutorial and do the same thing for each of them. If like me, you only have one business, but you want to buy more than $10,000 of I-bonds, there is a legitimate way to do this as an individual via the legal loophole that I discovered a few weeks earlier. We use the same legal loophole to bulk up our IBON portfolio in 2022, and you may be able to do the same. I've linked that video in the description below. Now let's cover some of the most frequently asked questions that folks have about buying IBONs for their business. Can you name a beneficiary on your business's IBONs? No, you can't designate a beneficiary or second owner on a business account. If you were to pass away, whoever you pass ownership of the business to would own the business's I-bonds. This new owner would then need to change the account manager on the business's treasury direct account via FS form 5446. Can you transfer I-bonds from your business to yourself? The answer is yes, you can do this using FS form 5511, but as is typical of all I-bond transfers via Treasury Direct, you have to wait five business days from the date of purchase to initiate the transfer. That was the answer I got from two different but equally friendly and helpful Treasury Direct representatives. Having said that, as I mentioned earlier, best practice is to keep your business finances and investments separate from your personal finances and investments. So it's not something we would do for our ongoing business. If you do decide to go down this route though, just keep in mind that you should not do this in a year when you've bought the maximum allowable amount in your personal account via Treasury Direct. Because then you'd go over the legal IBON annual purchase limit, which currently stands at $10,000. What happens when the business redeems its IBONs? When your business redeems its IBONs, Treasury Direct will transfer the proceeds to your default business bank account. Your business can then use the I-bond proceeds as it normally would use its cash. For example, to invest in other assets, fund operating expenses, and even to pay you. Any interest earned on the I-bonds is taxable to your business and must be included on the business's tax return in the year the I-bonds are cashed out. A 1099 INT form will be generated using the EIN or whatever tax ID you used for your business when you first set up your business account with Treasury Direct. You can download this form directly from your business's Treasury Direct account come tax time. What happens if your business gets a judgment against it, is sold, or shuts down? If your business gets a judgment against it, all your business's assets, including the I-bonds, will be used as part of that judgment. If your business is sold or changes owners, the new owners will inherit all the business's assets and liabilities. So the new owners get the I-bonds. 
If your business shuts down altogether, you can either cash out the I bonds owned by your business and use the cash proceeds to wrap up your business's final expenses, or you can transfer the I bonds from your business's treasury direct account to your own personal treasury direct account via FS form 5511. Now that you've bought I bonds for your business, be sure to check out our I bond playlist here. If you're interested in buying some I bonds for yourself, your kids, or if you want to learn more about the legal loophole that I discovered that's allowed us to load up on even more I bonds in our personal portfolio, and that may allow you to do the same beyond the annual I bond purchase limit. Or take a look at our other inflation videos here if you're in search of top money tips on inflation proofing your finances beyond I bonds during these uncertain times. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and, and drop me a note here if you're interested in working together and hitting those financial goals quicker and easier than you would be able to do on your own. See you next week with another money-saving wealth-building video.